Oh, we appreciate your ever so patience during that break. But now Davenport, St. Clair going off against themselves in the best of five series to try and take on Northwood in the grand final. Lol, that's a funny one. Uh, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't really think either of these two teams will be faring all that well against Northwood. But regardless, it's still a test of time to see who will meet their fate inside of a grand final. One of these teams will be eliminated from contention here in the regional playoffs, but again, have another chance to fight next week for the LCQs for the LAN. Uh, but regardless, Amber, uh, it's been it's been a fun day so far. Some action pack Call of Duty. Uh, yep. We've had pretty much everything that we could have wanted out of Call of Duty today. Quick series, long yeah. series, anything that you want in between. And now St. Clair gets to run it back against Davenport, which was the team that knocked them down to the lower bracket. And not only do they get to run it back against this team, they get to run it back with a, well, word for word, bar for bar, uh, same map set that they did the first go around that, like you said, Davenport took it in a 3-0 yeah. fashion. So just to kind of uh, run through at least the score lines of that, it was 211-250 on Embassy Hardpoint, 3-6 um, to six favoring Davenport on Fortress s &D, and then 2-3 to three on the Asilo Control. I said all of those backwards. I hope you could follow, but either way, Davenport <laughs> able to take it in a 3-0 fashion. Exact same map set. Yep. You know, it's, it's hard enough beating uh, the same team twice, let alone that team being St. Clair. Uh, Davenport has seemed to have their number the entire year. So, so I, again, it's the same thing as the CSUN, where they had the same fortress uh, for map one against St. Edwards, where you don't win one of those maps, it feels like more and more pressure to win the ones that you had already faced yeah. them on. And, and that's more and more confidence on top of any other map set. It's more confidence that St. Clair will earn if they can take map one, if they can take map two. Any of these that yeah. improve for them is only going to bode better, better for their chances to take the series. Absolutely. We'll take a look at Davenport's roster here. Uh, first time on stream, at least today, that we've gotten to see them. Exib, Anthrax, Gecko, and Sheldon, uh, a team that has uh, lived up to the test of time and has been a, uh, a star-studded roster from, from start to finish throughout the entirety of the College Cod year. Um, again, just like with any team that's found their way into the lower bracket, there's been ups, there's been downs, but mostly at the end here, uh, getting to the top three inside of the Midwest. It's been a lot of good. So that's at least a storyline they're going to be happy to having to tout for themselves. Um, but really, when I look to this team, I look to Gecko, I look to Anthrax, I look to Sheldon, I look to Exum, I look to everybody on this roster. Because any of these individual players at any moment's notice can have a pop-off performance and be the leading star-studded player for this Davenport team, which is pretty scary. Uh, but at the same time, there can also be a lot of lackluster aspects of their play too that comes along with this roster's volatility. So I'll say this at the very least. Sure, St. Clair got the opportunity to run it back, um, but it's it's going to be quite difficult against this Davenport team mm -hmm. that has already beat them a couple of good times throughout the year. So yeah. I don't want to I don't want to spoil things too early here in St. Clair. Uh, you know they, they've had a lot of good throughout the day, uh, but as we take a look at the St. Clair roster, the one thing I do kind of want to point out for this team is that Davenport has yet to play today. They haven't really had to play any of their big matches yet. Uh, St. Clair has already played two grueling series against their opponents. The biggest thing that I can say is that when it comes to playing through a long day of Call of Duty, that mental fatigue that you start to get for yourself, it can definitely weigh on your performance, and Davenport are going to look to exploit that. But uh, so we just saw this team take down uh, the team beforehand. SIU <laughs> should not have been a five-game series. No. Uh, they'll uh, they'll look to go ahead and strike back with force again. Yeah, they will, and I think briefly slowed down at the tail end of that series. I think that made things a bit harder for them. Um, at least for Davenport, right? You vetoed the Expo control, even though, uh, well, SIU, you we were able to take it and then force it all the way to a game five. It's still one that St. Clair looked really comfortable on. So uh, for all these players, again, we've seen them in every round of the losers that we've followed today. Look, when they all show up and tee up, uh, I, the same thing if it's ever Davenport, right? I, 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 it feels... Like, there's not a team you can say is playing. Well, it's because you can't. But, I mean, a team playing at the level as consistent as Northwood, right? Both teams have had their ups. Both teams, I feel like St. Clair, Davenport, and St. Mm -hmm. Edwards, we've kind of lumped in this conversation of when they're good, they're great. When they're not, I mean, yeah, they, they end up faltering. They end up losing series. So who has more ice? Who's going to play more mistake-free Call of Duty? And, and what better way than to see a matchup against these teams once again, let alone in this playoff for a second time specifically? I mean, have a look at the season records, right? You wouldn't think that Davenport could <laughs> no. even be here uh, against St. Clair. I mean, both teams are great teams. You look at the head-to-head -head and what the numbers break down to. The playoff record, I think, is what's most important for you. Davenport yep. just having taken a loss in winner's finals. in Northwood. I'm thinking down here to losers' finals. But now St. Clair, like I said, battled through a couple of maps. Now we're able to get themselves in this position. But as far as the head-to-head -head is concerned, you know, on paper, night and day difference. Yet Davenport's already handed them a real loss in this playoff.
It's, it seems like this is a roster that was just kind of created and uh, made for the playoffs. Where to the Miami Heat? Um, yeah, I'm gonna throw <laughs> that in there because I don't care. Um, but but again, like you know, this is not a, a boastful record in any stretch of the imagination. Sure, sure their S and D record is like it's cool, you know, it's positive. Control's like positive, but like that hard point record, you don't expect this team to be incredibly good at respawn. Just looking at things on paper, but when you get in the actual gameplay of this Davenport team, especially against the previous series where they played St. Clair in the upper bracket, you get a completely different picture mm -hmm. of how things went because the last time through map one although it was relatively close it was on an embassy and guess what in this map set well we're also going to be seeing an embassy for map number one yeah. last time through amber read them off already but it was a 250 211 win for davenport on the embassy the fortress search and destroy was a 6-3 win for davenport and the lse low control was a 3-2 win so it's not like the series wasn't close it just could have been a little closer and I think St. Clair are going to want to capitalize on some of their mistakes. They played well on Embassy earlier on today. Their Fortress Search and Destroy, where they clutched up against SIUE in the previous series in that final game. That's going to be the storyline that's probably going to dictate a lot of things. But I, I know I said there's a lot of mental fatigue that comes along with playing a long day of Call of Duty. On the opposite side, and if you flip that coin to the heads, it also goes ahead and goes to show that this team is hot. They're warmed up. They're fired up. And they're ready to take on this Davenport roster because they know they want to take not only revenge on this team, but they want to give themselves at least a shot against Northwood to get a land qualified spot without having to go through next week's LCQ. Absolutely, so Davenport, uh, again, you just throw all your numbers that you had coming into the playoffs out the window. That's kind of what we're at at this point. Both of these teams showing and rearing their playoff prowess as they tend to do, you know, year in and year out. Davenport gonna try to take them down two times in the same weekend. St. Clair, Ward Bazaar and said, we'll child that, run back the same series and see what they can do to try to improve. Both of them itching, rearing to play Northwood, or maybe maybe not so much. I don't know. <laughs> given given how usually matchups against Northwood go, either way, there's a long series ahead of us here between these two teams. Of course, the the other match that we'll be following alongside will be St. Edwards and New Mexico State. That'll be one where we'll be getting look-ins as well. Uh, but for this one here, seen a lot of these teams the entire year. Seen a lot of them playing each other. Yep. And uh, yeah, for uh, Davenport just seemed to have their number at the moment. St. Clair can finally get, I, I guess one of the last laps there's still you know land qualifiers to be played for but at least as far as the regional playoffs are concerned could get the last lap here this weekend uh could end up taking the win and, and and you know giving themselves a chance to lock their spot for land but uh, for the panthers um it, you know it, it's just a weird feeling going into it saying all right we, we three out them early this weekend exact same maps you know do you think there's like an edge of like nervousness going on the same map set again knowing this team's good or do you just have the confidence of like yeah we're just we're just putting these guys down again I think realistically speaking, I think the map set was picked for not only a reason of, I, I don't even think there was even a thought of like running back the same map set. I, I think mm -hmm. it's just a, a level of comfortability that these teams have and they want to go back and play to their, their, their most capable strengths. And for Davenport, you know, when they picked their map set, that's what they wanted. They they, they, they had a plan. They, they set out to do that plan. And they probably took a look at the series yesterday and they said, okay, well, what maps did we beat them on? Hey, let's just try to favor those if we can get them in our map pool. Yep. St. Clair allowed them to pick those. So they're like, Okay, let's run it back and yeah. st Clair at the same time it was like okay well we played maybe a close map on this one or we feel like we probably could have played a bit better on this map so they're like all right let's run it back so now now we get to a standstill where it's like okay i don't i don't really think there's like a level of, of nervousness or anything like that uh when it when it comes into the overall preparation and in picking the maps for this mm -hmm. series but I, I do feel like there definitely is a, a sort of a sort of stigma around this davenport team now it's like well if you, you beat them yesterday on these maps probably should do it again in a similar yeah. fashion um, and that's more or less what they're going to have to lead up to and try to, uh, you know, maybe find their way in like a, like a big way. But uh, we'll hop into New Mexico State and St. Edwards for the moment's time while we wait for St. Clair and Davenport's match to be ready for us. On a hotel hard point here early on, St. Edwards are reeling off of what was a phenomenal 3-0 sweep over the CSUN roster. New Mexico State, though, probably going to be a bit more tough of a challenge. We'll say this, though. He's already started the slaying off to a great start here, but Eons was a absolute animal inside of that map three control and throughout the entire series as well. Uh, yeah, Eon's just finding his home here on Hotel, and you're hoping that can be the case if you are a Hilltoppers fan. Early on in this one, a nearly tied game going into P2, but New Mexico State Aggies will be on the prowl quickly trying to get an early break as Doldeon's going to find a kill, trying to slip through spot side and get Spawn's influence for his team as the Hilltoppers look to spawn restaurant. It's basically going to be a 4v4 looking to fight for this early bit of time. Opens up the door, creak in the back way. Vanity gets some nice play shots with a hip fire on Phenom. Was able to use the movement tech around him. That's P2 locked down here for St. Edwards for the first admit of early time. Back in behind the bar. 
A little desperate attendance. It is going to be St. Edwards that finds those kills. They don't realize that the flood is in through the satellite side. So as those players from New Mexico State start to march their way forward, St. Edwards broken out immediately. And now they can start to play this from a different angle. Still trying to work through spawn. Maybe a last second slip to the back. If you're Vanity trying to find a couple of these kills and put things from a different angle, jumps up, tries to snap to the second, isn't quite able to find the kill. So a 20 point lead once again for the Aggies as they're trying to fight for scrap time here. The back 15 going their way, but you can already see Phenom out on rotation, trying to get to kitchen early. And a lot of the early edge that these teams get is that P2 to P3 rotation. St. Edward's pinned in the back, trying to battle for scrap time, not even going to get that. And all four players still have to hike across the map. Mexico State have done a wonderful job so far, not only breaking, but being able to rotate here instead of the kitchen. They've got themselves up for the initial time of P3. Eons around the corner. We'll be waiting. Nade now out from Electric will force the push to be just a tad bit slower here from St. Edward. And as the Hilltoppers have started to make their way forward, it's three kills that go the way of New Mexico State. And now all four dead. St. Edward's back to the respawn block. Already a 50-point lead here for the Aggies. And as they can start to push their way out, another gunfight goes the way of the Electric SMG. He's already got 50 seconds of hill time to couple with it, too. Insane. Actually. Good performance so far. New Mexico State rolling early in this one. And he's going to line up a couple more kills. Try to chat around the corner, but Eon's going to line up a couple single-handedly. Get the break for his team. Goes for three. And, I mean, why not the ace at this point? You know where Jolteon is. He's going to snake the counter. End up finding the kill. Dude. All four players get scrap time earned for his team. And you're just hoping that your teammates can win a couple gunfights on rotation to uh, lock down P4. And they look to do that early on. Eon's up to 10 and 8. Also with the majority of hill time for his team. Now he's going to pinch back through mid, but you've got Phenom lying in wait. Laying no top shot. <laughs> All right, well, you know, that's probably not a gunfight he should have won, but he did. So now he can start making his way forward back over towards the hill. And St. Edwards, all that work that Ehans did to try and get the last 20 seconds of scrap time on the kitchen while you had yourselves out and rotated. Well, it's for not because New Mexico State was able to break in with a snap of the fingers in relative ease. Still a 50-point game here. New Mexico State on top. Jolteon snaps back the Thresh with a trade of his own. Problem is, is reality and St. Edward still have full control here of the Bar Hill. They've got the right side spawns over by P2. New Mexico State has the bedroom control, but they're going to have to fight directly into the long-range AR gunfights. Electric SMG up close is going to be able to find reality. Eons falls and another break in for the last one. 40-point lead. As we'll look to set our sights on restaurant here for P5. And once again, not only is it a clean kill feed for the Aggies to try to get scrap time, but it's also going to be out another rotation. St. Edwards haven't been able to put much pressure on the map, seeing as they've been fighting for 10, 15 seconds at a time, and not even that they've been winning it. So here, they need to get an early break. They need to make a good stand. A couple kills going their way on transition should be a good way to kick things off, but you still need to clean out a couple more before you're safe and sound. Phenom snaps around at the perfect time, finds Vanity. Jose will fall at the same stretch. Zeons is looking to snake that head glitch there. Forces Phenom to back off with a well-placed nade. Here comes the break-in from New Mexico State, though. Jolteon and Electric pair for two. The last one is Vanity out and around the right side. Semtex will force him not to be able to go through the doorway. Phenom shots will be good, and that's all four broken in it immediately. St. Edwards, it looked like they had something good going for themselves in the restaurant, but then they were just forced out by these pesky Aggies. Thresh went to get one jewelry. A pinch could develop on the hill. Vanity combines Thresh for a second. Now with the last player in, they collapse, they get the break. But again, it's for another set of 20 seconds. Sure, they're out on rotation here, but I think they're going to be quickly outnumbered with Electric playing for these exit kills. Should be behind Vanity here in a moment. You're still going to have a 3v2 for the first portion of time. And St. Andrew just haven't been able to walk away with it. Thresh reality combined for a couple. So at least that'll flip things in your favor and make it a 2v1 as this hill looks to pop. But you still need to come back about 40 or so points. There's good shots there from Zay. With attack in hand, now can reposition himself inside a top bed. However, his reality is there in the back line. Electric's just going to have to try and make himself a bit of an obstacle course to get back over towards Hill. Well-placed Nade forces one back. He gets all the way to the staircase. Has a bit of movement tech to go along with it. But the problem is, is well, as soon as he got there, he got shut down. St. Edwards have held down P6 in all of its entirety so far. Gotten themselves back within 20 points, and that continues to grow ever so close to that 129 scoreline that the Aggies have touted for themselves. Thresh on the staircase, good snaps with the Vaznev, switches to the tack and is able to find himself a second. Inside of the hill, though, for the last 20 seconds is where the fight will be. Zay in the back line, Jolty on there. Thresh good challenge around the corner, and it's Eons so who will be there to clean everything up at the end. St. Edwards should get the last bits of scrap time, being I'm the only one who might shout. It's going to be a tied game going into P1. Second set of rotation for St. Edward. They're not playing with the same kind of map control that uh, they generally got away with earlier in their series. And that's just a testament to how stout this New Mexico team state, or New Mexico State team is. And for the Aggies, you let them come back. You open the door to get them back into this one. Can you play as tough? Win as many of those rotations as you did the first go round this time. For now, it's St. Edward's on time early. 
being on up top. Credit to the Hilltoppers, though, for being able to bring this one back. P1, second set of rotations underway. Vanity looking for Jose. Will challenge out to the opposite side. Snap onto Electric is all so beautiful. Gets a teammate to help him out, though, in the process. And now his three kills go the way of St. Edwards. They can sit inside of this hard point in the middle of the map. Jolteon killed off of it. 137-137 tie game here. As those P2 spawns are now going to be what is up for the fight. You can see off screen, players five and players one from each individual team looking to go ahead and find a gunfight through the back lines. Jose doesn't want to give himself presence in his, excuse me, his positioning known just yet. He looks up the staircase over towards the right. Thresh will be the first one to fall. And he can escape to the back lines and hide for a moment's time. It's the death sound three set as well. Vanity lying in wait around check in. Spa spawns are going to be in for St. Edwards. It's, it is a picture in picture of what we saw the last go around. They're trying to fight to this bottom side. They fought the entire hard point just to walk away with maybe 10 total seconds of time. So they're trying to get a quicker break here. 15 seconds ticked off and favoring New Mexico State. They're still making this hold, still <laughs> finding these kills and. Still pushing back this hilltopper line. And Jolteon's going to spot out Thresh. The snake this egglitch. Thresh can't even challenge it around the corner. Throws a couple of shoulders and will finally cut down by this New Mexico State team. And this is where the score line really started to take off the last time through. The P2 rotation back over on the kitchen. St. Edwards trying to break in here. They do not want to allow the scrap time to go the opposite way. And as Jose in New Mexico State will still continue to spawn over by P2. Finally, St. Edwards have a breath of fresh air to escape across the map and set themselves up for the kitchen hill. Uh, it's laying is relatively even across the board really Jolteon with the standout performance here and uh, just about a 2.0 KD that's kind of separating him from the pack as well as over 90 seconds in the hill but P3 rotation you weren't able to win it last time around if you're St. Edwards you get a clean setup in here the Aggies have to work through this bottom side Eons is going to try to line up a couple Ooh. gets comms in that three are working through this side so you're going to see everyone try to group up tighten up the setup but that's going to let put close spawns come into the Aggies and now they're trying to break Reinforcement in through Wine might be able to get some good timing on Phenom in middle of the map. Vanity's Semtex will find Electric through the front door, so now they'll be forced to go through the double doors in the back line spawn. Jolteon in, Thresh good kill. Phenom now looking over the top and should be able to make quick work of one. St. Edward's still holding on in towards the hill. Nobody from New Mexico State has really been able to break the line. Sure, they found a few kills, but once again, it's the side of St. Edward's who's making quick work of these Aggies. And as Vanity finds the last kill, that should be the scrap time to the St. Edward's roster. Back in the lead yet again are the Hilltoppers. Another lead change, fighting tooth and nail down to the wire. This hill should be the one that someone eclipses 200 points. Mexico State really a 3v3 on rotation. These first gunfights going the way of the hilltoppers. A couple will go, but this is how it went last time. And you know best, Alex. New Mexico State simply waltzed into that hill. They're able to break it with ease and force these players out for St. Edwards. Now we'll see if they're able to do the same, but the setup looking a little bit better here, at least out of oh. St. Edwards' kills, though, not going their way. And he doesn't look to the back line, but Eons gets absolutely thrashed across the map. Trophy system, thankfully, is able to clean one up, so it might make this push just a bit easier for St. Edwards, but they have no numbers around the hill. New Mexico State has everybody here and around the bar. All the angles throughout the map are watched. However, it doesn't mean you have to win those individual gunfights. And as Jose hops up from back around the desk, St. Edwards, once again, are able to break into the hill. The bar is there. It's 23 seconds for either team to get. I think if you're New Mexico State, sure you don't want to let them have this time necessarily, but you definitely want to keep these top side spawns. Things are going to get mixy though as you look to collapse, look to try to push into a couple different lanes. Three for one in the feed and Vanity going to hit the road. You have spawns coming in jewelry and restaurant. Vanity should have got eyes on electric there, isn't able to get the kill. Thresh, Eons, trying to get out on rotation now, find a couple of these kills, but it is all numbers for the Aggies here. The SP5 flips the pop and a 10 point lead to come back from, but both teams within 30 seconds of winning. I mean, feed on. I mean, he might have just saved the game right there. He was able to find Vanity, even just one shot in the back, and allowed Electric to win the gunfight with the Vaznev up close. And now into the restaurant, here comes the push. Jolteon around the back line, finds Eon, and on the opposite side, through the kitchen, able to find one is Phenom. Thresh gonna invest the streak that he had. 2.30, 2.25, 20 seconds for New Mexico to win. It could end here in the restaurant. Thresh, go on to Oze. Electric in the hill. St. Edwards trying to break back in, and they finally will, but there's still two players here from New Mexico State trying to make work. And they're trying to stabilize. They're trying to figure out where this next wave is coming from. Now all arrows face forward. It's coming through rugs. It's coming through jewelry. Get your irons up and be ready to take these. Ten seconds left for St. Edwards. The Hilltoppers still in full control of the restaurant. But three players here from New Mexico State trying to make work. Vanity able to find one. Can't snap to the second. New Mexico State is in. And now it's all about the rotations. And guess who's there? It's re reality. Oh, man, and these exit kills. Thresh is just going to be lining up a couple of this hill pop. You have five seconds to make a play, but you're about to get shot in the back. Vanity trying to get timing on Zay isn't quite going to get there. The contest is in, and they have numbers as well. 
Reality around the corner. First challenge is in. New Mexico State have broken themselves into the hill, but Vanity's here. Trade from the right. Eon's trying to go big for his team. Knows where the last one's gonna be, and he can't touch. St. Edwards take map one. And I thought for a second that that last tick wasn't gonna come in before he stepped his toe into the hard point. The Aggies lose a heartbreaker where they had the control for the most of the map. Absolutely did. But when St. Edwards started winning those rotations, again, they at least won the one to P4, and sure, if you're New Mexico State, you get in early. Actually, New Mexico State won the last two in a sense, apart from P6, and still St. Edwards find, found a way to get in at the perfect time. And that's about as close as we expected this one to go. <laughs> On the other side of things, <laughs> Not quite as close as uh, that was the first time around. And <laughs> near 100 points. You hit there, buddy. Uh, yeah, I was just shocked too to see the score line. And near 100 points. Darren said, run it back. Davenport said, let's go. And uh, well, right now, Saints are looking to laugh early on. And King gave the call. He's like, yeah, we're going to go to Davenport real quick. And I was like, okay, well, he said Davenport, so it's probably up. Uh, nope. <laughs> they, are, they are down by uh, 100 points almost. But at least here in the Embassy hard point, at a P4, they might be able to make some good work. At least get themselves back within a reasonable distance. Seconds would be phenomenal, but Priestley has already found himself too. He's walking three piece inside of this hard point here. Won't be able to get the third this time. However, he has another opportunity. Gecko, first one up for a challenge. Finds Priestley with attack in hand. His blast now around the corner looks for Thrax. He'll go ahead, find himself a kill on the map. With 20 seconds left here, St. Clair have gotten themselves a nice break. Should get the scraps here. His exit falls to the hands of uh, okay. I didn't want I didn't want to like <laughs> proceed in, but like yeah. good thing Blaze is able to walk away with the kill. Back out to 100 point lead. And already on the move, trying to get into P5 Bendy. Right here, it just, I mean, just walk, walks into the rotation. I mean, if you're going to lose all of P4 time, you, you should win the rotation. The Panthers will be on the outside looking in. A couple kills go their way. Bendy, last one on the hill, he's going to end up backing down. And we've got Thrax pinching in through Orange. Bendy will still take that gunfight. So time sitting empty. We've got St. Clair looming on the outside. Shelled and locked on a couple, at least to push back this first attempt. A solid break there from Davenport, but they still have a lot of St. Clair players around the zone. Trying to hop back in. Exit forces the staircase backed all the way off to 12 HP. Thrax around the corner only has 24 in Blaze. Well, he'll just hop around the corner. Get good timing on that player from Davenport. However, though, Gecko, Exit, two kills go their way. They've gotten themselves back into this kitchen hill. 20 seconds left here for Davenport to go ahead and get themselves time with. Problem is, is this is just a hop, skip, and a jump here for the next set of rotations. So St. Clair... They are completely fine with allowing themselves to get back into this hard point, collect the scraps, and keep that lead at 100 plus. And obviously, we didn't see the majority of that first set of rotations. Um, but coming into the scoreline that we did, yeah, I'm going to say St. Clair was, you know, playing 50 50, at least a little bit for P1. Well, I guess, you know, you only had four points if you were Davenport. So less than 50 50, but more so empty time. Won some good rotations as well. And so for Davenport, you're going to need to make that change this time around. You can't let this time go for free because. I'm not saying it's do or die time, but you are going to have to start ripping off at least 40 60s, if not a full 60 by the time you get to P3. Echo looking across. Crossfire with his teammates set up. Unfortunately, though, doesn't realize that Bendy's up behind him. At the top of where P3 would be. Middle of the map now vacated for the time being. Relays will back all the way off. Smart not to challenge that immediately. Does have a cruise missile to work with. The utility for St. Clair to work with. 170 to 50, 120 point lead. Still continuing to run this score up by sitting inside of P1. And while that lays to waste, you still have player number four in exit up on the top head glitch inside of the building. Won't challenge out the middle of the map just yet. Everybody trying to set up over by P2. 10 seconds. And a gecko gunfight that won't be one. That could just give St. Clair an in. There it is. The final kill in the back comes through. You still have pressure. You still have presence here. Sheldon maybe can make work of some players. Knows that they're also working through the back and is able to find two really big kills that'll soften this push for his team. Priestley gets one to the front, but Chow's back into Embassy. No one on time just yet. Everyone for Davenport trying to clear their bases as they'll finally hop on. But the scoreline, 182, 53. Streaks will get invested. Davenport maybe starting to warm up here, but is it too little too late? Because, uh, yeah, you can't have that much more of this time sit empty without starting to contest it. Sheldon on the truck. Bendy. Backside head glitch, just such good shots there from the prone position. Five in a row, looking to get a streak for himself. Relays the next one up. Hey, buddy, back to the respawn block. We'll see you later. 182, 72, Davenport looking to not only hold down the scrap time, but hold themselves a good rotation here over towards E3. Relays the first one up the staircase. Priestley over towards the left. Some information on Blaze, who's challenging from the right side. Three players go down here from Davenport. Doesn't snap back over towards the ladder. As all these players from the Saints have fallen, and the scrap time goes the way of Davenport. This is the end that they needed inside of the series. This could just get them back into the game. A full 60 here would absolutely put them in prime position. 
to rally back into this one. It would only put them down 30 or so points. They're gonna have to play it strong. St. Clair trying to push through a couple different lanes. You gotta be ready for all these gunfights. You gotta be willing to win some ones. Priestley, does he get timing of the ladder? Answer, yes. Oh, oh I thought. Oh my gosh. Exim. Oh, 6 HP. I thought he found the timing, but doesn't. The miracle of the full 60 still staying alive here. Davenport trying to rally back into this one on a big P3. And Thrax is just in such a great spot here. Pushed himself so far up that nobody expected him to be there. Davenport now on the staircase watching a few St. Clair, Clair players. In from the back though is Blaze. Able to find two inside of the hill. Third one on the staircase. He'll take that every day of the week. Although Davenport is looking for a full 60 there. St. Clair got themselves a good bit of scrap time too. Last time this deal was broken in pretty quickly by the Saints. Davenport need a good hold here once again. So many different angles to lock down. Gecko playing outside, trying to watch this whole push through tennis while everyone else watching one of the respective 16 doorways. St. Clair could look to try to enter here. Double halls, back door, whatever the case may be. Trying to find a soft spot, but given none. Davenport have simply turned this game around here at the moment. Really, but it felt like the last possible moment for them. Still a lot of work to be done. This could put them 30 points of tying things up. But St. Clair have been all but muted, stunted, stalled here the last few hills. Panthers really trying to rally back into this one. Good angle from Sheldon. He's able to watch the left and the right. Tag team with his teammates. Shots are good onto one. Knows the second one is there, but Gecko is able to help out Sheldon in for the back line. Find the last St. Clair player. Another hill where Davenport has done such a great job of holding a significant amount of time. Another 20 seconds of scrap time here at the end. Shouldn't put them with just about 20 seconds within the reach of St. Clair. In a map where St. Clair had about a 150 point advantage at one point has all been reduced to ash. Priestley being 7 and 22 is not something you'll see every day either, but it's significantly slowed down the back half of this afternoon into the evening as far as gameplay is concerned and everyone for Davenport rolling. I mean, the team combining on a street gecko back out four, everyone trying to divvy and carry as much of this load as possible. You don't want this comeback to be all for naught. They're starting to chow around these corners, but it's going to be three for one in the feed. What can you do, Sheldon, to find a couple? Oh, You've yeah. been shooting straight from here, but Priestley gonna put one right through the heart that might have just been the dagger for this one the old london escapade with a knife <sighs> semtech's gonna be out rack's gonna throw a nade in blaze looking for one sheldon up for the challenge i thought maybe bendy gets the second but he's in towards the hill pinstripe kill feed trades back and forth davenport need this scrap time desperately here you cannot allow any more of this time to go to the hands of saint oh. Clair. because if you do in the middle of the map just a hop skip and a jump away only three to four seconds might just be the dagger here 15 is all they need Oh, and with that win condition set, all they need to do, play for time here and there, dip a toe in here and there. They're going to be nine seconds from closing this one out. The Panthers have tried everything they can to rally back, but already down to a 60-point deficit. You have to fight for P1. You also have to fight Hold. for P2. A bit too much on the docket, Sheldon. Combined for a streak, mid-map will be open for now, but you have to sell out for this time. St. Clair going to be looking for an end here towards the hard point. You've got Priestley over towards the right side building. Gecko looking to make his way in. Thrax trying to get himself some good hard point time, but nobody from St. Clair is peaking just yet. They're waiting for a couple of these kills to be good for themselves to then fly into the middle of the map. They want to close things out here, and I think that just might have done it. That might have been the final nail in the coffin. Two kills go St. Clair's way. The only one that can make their notice known on the middle of the map is going to be Thrax. And as he falls in the back line, St. Clair will be able to take map number one. They got 3 0 by this Davenport roster in the upper bracket again, set down to lowers. And well, they're playing back the same map set. They'll take map one. Take it by a more confident margin as well than what Davenport did against them, released. Having a good series here. Davenport tried to get things going late, but I think it was just a bit too little too late. Whenever you have to get that P5 to P1 rotation with the game on the line, it can just be a bit too much to ask. Priestley, having the slowest lane performance. Don't want to harp on it too much, but you talk about when the St. Clair team, if he can put a performance like that and they still win by, what, 50, 60 points? <laughs> yeah. Imagine what happens when he starts to tee up again, because, whew, it's just, I, I, again, when things are going good, they're going great, but you lost that map just a day ago, you take it here in this one, that's just, at, at the very least, has to be just an air of confidence of, cool, it, the series cannot go worse than it did the last time. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I guess if that's the, the angle that St. Clair want to take, um, that's cool. Um, I, I'll still say this, though, um, it, it was just another one of those things that, yes, you know, a team's going to make a run way through the game that's just how cod goes uh most likely you're not going to be able to you know 100 point club an adversary who's made it to the lower finals of the regional playoffs 
But just as a, uh, a confidence builder, I think you're right. Um, I, I think St. Clair does come out on top of this with a renewed mindset and, and a kind of a freshness in their overall sense. Um, I, I, the, the question was asked at the top of the stream. It was like, okay, well, if, if St. Clair have already played a, a lot of Call of Duty, a lot of close Call of Duty today, you know, mentally, is, is this going to be a bit taxing on them? Will they be able to come out with the same firepower and flair that they did in the <laughs> other two series? And I think for the most part, that question has been pretty much answered across the board. Um, you know, again, kind of to piggyback off your point, you don't really see Priestly have that bad of games. Uh, but even, you know, playing a main AR role on an embassy where things can get quite mixy for those SMGs, uh, he was able to tee up towards the end. He saw the minute and 15 of the objective time as well. Um, so, so, I, so I think there, there's a lot of good that St. Clair now have in the back of their mind. If anything, this puts a lot more stress on this Davenport team to again not only be able to take the same series set that you did yesterday because that's what everybody expects of you now but after a relatively embarrassing map one performance especially in the first half um how do you bounce back in this snd and if you allow st Clair to go up 2-0 are you starting to really feel the effect of the saints in the griff diff yeah actually because again I, I just think the pressure will only mount if st Clair can continue ripping off maps I, again, it's just tough. Uh, obviously, you, you gave a really good breakdown and layout of what thinking is going into ending up with the same map set, but I just think it adds a, a level of pressure where, you know, as much as St. Clair will be gaining confidence, not only after this map, but if, let's say they take the search, suddenly Davenport's like, wow, shoot, like, we took that yesterday, and now we got to go to the CeeLo, where hopefully we can score up, and we'd have to pull off a reverse sweep against mm -hmm. them and stuff. And so, I mean, again, obviously, these players have a bit more composure than at, maybe at times, you know, giving them credit in a sense, but it is still something just uh, interesting to note because... Yeah, that's just the basics of how ebb and flow of momentum go in a series. You're running back the exact same thing. St. Clair walk away with a different result in map one. So Davenport feel like they need to come out with an even stronger map two performance just to kind of stop any kind of momentum from uh, continuing to, to, you know, garner itself. And uh, Fortress Search and Destroy, St. Clair is 2-0 on today specifically. One in a game five setting, one in the map two. As we'll watch over these highlights again from the map one between St. Edwards and New Mexico State. But to, to kind of finish up that point, I mean, again, St. Edward has, though it's been around 11 and around 10, respectively, on the Fortress Search yep. and Destroy. They've walked away with two wins, regardless. Talking about this matchup, though, between St. Edwards and New Mexico State, another loser's finals opportunity to get either of these teams back into a grand final or a chance to qualify on a land appearance. And again, you know, like, it, it was interesting to say the least because, like, you know, St. Edwards played really good, New Mexico State played really good throughout, you know, different parts and stretches of this hard point. Um, but again, you know, we, we asked, you know, what was St. Edward's ability to pull off the ice against, uh, you, know, you know, really good top teams. And, and you know, with the, the names in the roster that pertails to St. Edward's, you don't really expect that question to happen to stick too much. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, w w dropping down to the lower bracket, having to fight through a few rounds, not just, you know, like getting to the lower final, but like having to fight through a few rounds of the lower bracket. I don't think a lot of people expected St. Edwards to be in that position. So, yes, it's a 10-point win in map one. Yes, it's close. Um, but again, as you and I have talked about many times already today, when St. Edwards gets that ball rolling, it's very hard to slow mm -hmm. them down. They're going to their statistically worst mode when it comes to the search and destroys. But if you're able to take that on an embassy, maybe force that as a 2-0 lead oh, yeah. into a control, things start to roll. But then you look on the opposite side of the coin for New Mexico State, and you start to say, okay, well, New Mexico State's been a pretty good search and destroy team all year long. They have an opportunity to even out the series and level things off at a 1-1 standstill. Both of these teams know the pressure of, of being in a late, or excuse me, a late match situation in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. I, I will say this about Mex New Mexico State, though. This is the year that was kind of their breakthrough year. And this is probably their best shot to show that they have a very good je ne sais quoi against a St. Edwards team that a lot of people had pegged up as one of the top teams inside of Collegiate Cod this year. Definitely so. I, I think this map too, I mean, again, it's hard to say, right? Because it could go both ways. But based on how St. Edwards series against CSUN went, you got you got to feel good if you're St. Edwards if you take the second map. Why? Because, yeah, it's statistically your worst mode. They have had a lot of problems in Search and Destroy here. Respawn, you know, 10 point win, but a uh, win's a win's a win. So, uh, again, if they can take the Search and Destroy, you, you got to feel for the potential to close it out in a 3 0. Of course, it's going to be on the cards given that they'd be up 2 0. But, uh, again, barring the simpletonness of that statement, the Search and Destroy, more confidence they can garner in that at the later point of this playoff stage. The, the scarier that gets for other teams because they can get confidence in this search later and later in this playoff run uh, again expect them to start to pull more of those off but that's something we'll of course have tabbed up have a look in when we get information for now we're going to be on fortress search and destroy st Clair running it back for the third time today we've been on board <laughs> them for it and uh yeah i mean I, we'll see what it brings because we have seen 
just about as much of, the, of this map with this team as you would like. Either way, Davenport opened up the first blood here and no looks towards this A side just yet. Fendi creeping up slowly. Attack in hand. Gonna get at least an equalizing kill to even things out of the 3 3 stands. Nope. Back over towards the truck. Semtech's going to be placed well. Won't be able to find Bendy. He's backed all the way off. Gecko doesn't want to get too aggressive. You don't want to lose the advantage that you have in terms of the life count on the defensive side. You want to force St. Clair to have to make the advantage come to you. You know, front A, if you want to do that, well, you have to get through three different players on Tappenport who are just waiting for you to get onto the bomb site. Jump across. Sheldon not going to be able to walk away with a kill. The sniper is concerned. The well placed nade could weaken one up and maybe just maybe get Davenport another favor. Oh man, Merlaze jumps into his own grenade. Unfortunate there. Strax finds the kill. So sure you get bombed down. But it's gonna be a 3v4. You clean up the last kill in the back. And Davenport walk away with round one. Not only do they keep the man advantage, of course, some unfortunate unfortunate self-explosions come in there. And uh yeah. Davenport walk away with a pretty comfortable round one, uh, uh, given that they played well around the A site, washed the cross, and St. Clair have kind of been slow playing it the entire day because they've been burnt when they've gotten aggressive. Davenport, happy to take things slow. First bloods are pretty much the difference maker here when you're playing against St. Clair. There's a lot of teams that can overcome first bloods in a lot of different ways, but uh, <laughs> St. Clair play a very momentum-based round of, of search and destroy. And when they don't get something to go their way, yes, you know, they have the opportunity to really be able to battle themselves back. It's still a difficult task to do. Trophy is broken for both sides, so you have anything and any utility left on over, well, you might be able to walk away with something. Relay somehow, one HP will survive. Still inside top art. Able to regen all the way back up. Sheldon on the staircase outside of top art will back off for the moment. Four versus three. Bomb has yet to wake its way up. Right now, St. Clair have infested themselves instead of art, but beautiful shots from Sheldon. Make it a 3v3 and give them new life on offense. Bendy's still trying to play open with a sniper, and still people are going to try to chow it. Please. Now able to get aggressive, find a kill. Sheldon's left in a 1v3. Bomb down on the A site. Going to try to reposition, find an easy kill, and does get a freebie to walk in his lap, but Bendy... Almost like the Simpsons gif, right in and right out. We'll be seeing ya. Cause now Sheldon has to try to rework these players, rework this bomb. Ooh. See if he can find anything and oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, I'd be standing down after that one. Glad that Priestley didn't challenge all the way directly through. Cause I thought he was gonna sprint directly at him knowing that he was weak from the hit marker on the snipe. And the staircase, Sheldon able to walk away with it, turns the opposite way, but now now back down the no, staircase. No, Priestley no, challenges no. and Davenport wins the round. Oh. And it, it could be a, it could, uh, and you know, you, you have some experience playing, right, you, you know, competitively. Um, if you have the man advantage, why would you ever not chow to play the trade? I know Bindi had a sniper too, right, so that changes things. It, I don't know his availability to pick up a vows, never attack. It's just so curious to me whenever teams let players isolate 1v1s. I mean, they're both playing open and closed gate. You don't have to push that, and they both get picked. It just makes me scratch my head every single time. The St. Clair should have walked away with. Isn't able to fall within their grasp, but Blaze will walk away with the blood. Early on in the round, 10 seconds go by. Davenport on the defensive side will at least be forced to back off for now. St. Clair look to maybe want to take the bomb over at B. As they clear out a bit of the middle map, now wrap this thing back over towards A. Should be able to get this down without too much trouble. Shell in with eyes. On Priestley getting bombed down, maybe we're gonna try to get him on the exit. Trying to dive away, doesn't get the timing. Gonna try to chow up Bendy v Sheldon with a sniper. Who can find the better end of timing? Exit, tagged up, backed up. Now pinned down on this side of the map as they're both gonna chow up Balk. Able to find that kill. Man disadvantage, you have to defuse the bomb also with Bendy playing the back line and... I mean, I mean good luck. <laughs> Kills fall their way and yep, there we go. I was gonna say like that that is like the picture perfect post plant setup they had every single angle that was possible for uh, davenport to commit to cut off and shut down and then the back line all you need to do is just have bendy watching over the site you're, you're not expecting a double challenge through the double doors there you're waiting for somebody to get aggressive in the back lines and you know, that's what was happening and sheldon got taken down in the back St. Clair were just looking to continuously hold pressure in every single spot that they had for themselves their power positions were at a 10 and yeah, I had no response for it. I mean, again, like it's just so hard to break in when you have no idea where anybody is and St. Clair well, set up for every angle. 
And I really like Bendy having, you know, he played the same spot whether he has a sniper or an AR, but the, uh, of course, playing with attack gives him a bit more flexibility, a bit more fluidity to miss some of those shots. And oh my gosh, but he's gonna line up a couple. Timing cannot be worse than Exit! You gotta be ready for that! <laughs> Hopefully, he got the final kill, because I, I wish I could see the dolphin die from Exit POV, but I, I just. I, I mean, this what? is not. I mean, <laughs> that looked like Mario jumping for the final flag, bro. Like, like that. <laughs> 500 points for sure. That was sick, bro. Like, yeah. <laughs> and especially that, like, you, you know, when you're when you're wrapping around the back, you know, you're going to be expecting a gunfight there. You don't expect someone flying a Mach 6 down a staircase at you. So, <laughs> we have seen it all day. We, dude, on God, we have. <laughs> but <laughs> the 2 0 lead, Davenport now losing two straight. St. Clair have gotten themselves back into the search and destroy. Very aggressive hit here on defense, though, from the side of Davenport. Please. Those Semtex out around the corner. Brock's going to be bro. looking for a challenge. and well, Maybe not the most aggressive gunfight that I would have liked to see Blaze take, but at least Priestley is able to trade things out and make it a three versus three. Uh, you can tell he was just itching to find any kind of information jumping around those double doors. But again, you, you put your team in a man disadvantage situation. At least the teammates are able to trade it out. But it, it's still slow towards this A site. St. Clair, do not give this a quick look. Many, many times, at least 30, 40 seconds bleed off the clock before they even get up there. You're trying to watch the flank. You're trying to do your due diligence. It is a technical 3v2 on the side as you have Gecko backed all the way up towards this B site. Priestly down once again to get the bomb. Rax not going to be privy to it until he sees this come in. Can't quite connect for the kill after his release finds another. So it was a 3v3 now, 3v2. Clock going to the Panthers. Rax and Gecko trying to break back onto the site, both playing for the double door side of things, trying to push to the front of this A site. St. Clair kind of learned from their mistakes when they were playing up against the likes of SCU. SIU, excuse me, like all the way through the back side of the map. Priestley here, Bendy there as well. Nobody giving any sort of timing. They're gonna go ahead for the defuse. Bendy reads it though with the sniper in hand. Davenport lose the round. St. Clair's on a burner with three in a row. Feeling like they're hitting form now in this one. Just the three two lead form, but like you said, three in a round. Or excuse me, three in a row. Now it's Davenport, final first blood, but St. Clair still able to bounce back with a quick trade and. Good objective play around this A site. No one giving a B look just yet, and it is quite challenging to get a B look, especially with snipers on either side of the thing watching the mid-cross. St. Clair going to try to run away with this one. Going to get out to uh, another 2-0 advantage in a series. If they can, still three rounds away from at Davenport. Just need to make a couple adjustments. Of course, Gecko getting on the board would be a good start. And ooh. Shoot it. Shoot him. Do it. Shoot it. <laughs> Go Free on, fire him. It. Oh, there's the stun, then though. Oh, Blaze is just oh. able to escape over towards the left. Stun doesn't connect. Door will be opened yet again. Nobody found just yet, but information given to St. Clair where Davenport might be able to send a couple players. Play shots through the double doors. Won't find anything just yet. As Exib's on the staircase with 16 HP, he was forced to back all the way off. 3-2 advantage here in the round. 55 seconds left here. Davenport still trying to make some noise on A. I'm should be going down. No kills going out just yet, but enough damage dealt. At 45 to the clock. We'll see how St. Clair look to rework this. Is basically going to hit the single window hop up, but Gecko is going to be ready on the snap. Able to find a kill who's first on the board, and what a good time for it. Is that going to spell disaster on their post plant setup? Betty with a trade. Now St. Clair to the bottom side of this map, but on the site. Oh. Exit, not even turning. I mean, not even turn around. I don't even know if he thought the door was closed or whatever, or that Bendy wasn't going to be able to get some good shots, but now Thrax, the last one alive ace. on the site. One versus two, Bendy going for the ace up on top, has to reload. Thrax is going to be here, has to challenge quickly, 12 seconds left. He gets it, you gotta find the body. Hey, don't sh hey, hey, hey. <laughs> None of that. You gotta defuse the bomb. Stop it, stop it, okay. Risk it for the biscuit I get. There we go. And and see, that's what you need to do. If you want to shoot the bodies, defuse first and then shoot the bodies. Jesus, dude, he scared the hell out of me. Eager Beaver. He would have hit. Well, he's ten and two, so like, go ahead, bro. But like, Jesus, man. He gave a peek at the clock, saw it was in double digits, and said, "Worth it." <laughs> <laughs> that's that that that's the Saint Clair we were uh, we've been waiting to arrive here in the playoffs. Back to the offense here. Saint Clair have won four straight rounds after Davenport was able to find the first two here in the S and D. Cruise missile here for Pandy. Streaks in the back pocket for St. Clair. They want to get some information. Maybe get a first blood off the board. Oh, the trophy system, maybe not. Thrax is pushed up with attack in hand. 
free scene a challenge on the back line uses the head glitch to his advantage takes thrax off the board and once again davenport put in a situation where it's a four versus two and sinkler have all the advantage they want Oh, released. Good kill. Clears out the bottom side of the map. And I mean, a 4v1, sure, you can fly it out of the site. But they're looking to be pushing their way through to B. And Sheldon, just unfortunately, going to do a lot of clearing out just to get a whole lot of nothing out of it. Now on a 1v4. Pulled off a 1v3 earlier, but I think this one's looking a bit dicier for you, seeing as you have no information to work off of. You're going to have to re-break into B. And you just don't know where this first kill could come from. Sheldon's just trying to make his way aggressive, but I mean, <laughs> he just has no idea where he needs to look. Everywhere around the map, he isolates a one versus one, but he has no opportunity to even try to sniff that B-bomb site. And the second challenge there, he just needs to back off and will. Such a smart player on the St. Clair roster has led the way here in the S&D. Even out of everybody's skills on the side of St. Clair, and they're only one more positive than Tendi is. <laughs> I feel like ever since that Mercado ninja came in, Bendy's just been, been moving different on Surge. That is facts. That is absolutely true, but a very slow round drains down to the very end. St. Clair will find themselves their fifth straight round, put themselves a match point here inside of the search. They might just enjoy themselves a 2-0 lead on the team that sent them to the lower bracket. They really might. And boy, I bet you they're going to enjoy <laughs> every second of this if they can pull <laughs> off the series win. Bindi, as we've said, leading the way for the team. Davenport stunted early on in this one looking down the barrel uh, of a 2-0 that they probably weren't expecting on the run it back st Clair only garnering steam here at the late portion of this losers bracket run there'll be a bully ball attempt towards this a site they're actually a bit of the first blood gecko with the second in tow the third with the nade and that should all but be the round priestly gonna have to back down bomb um, will go down and the kill gets cleaned up all right well click that's a quick round that will more get say. themselves an answer for the first time in five straight rounds, but it's, been, it's better than no answer in the search and destroy, so I'll say that sure. at the very least. Um, sure. <laughs> but across the board, can't be too mad about it. I mean, everybody just starting to get their guns a bit bit warmer. One in six throughout the search and destroy at that point had been Gecko, so it's nice that he was able to get himself two there. Sheldon, the only one positive. Everybody else just kind of spreading out the uh, the old three three three. At least it's not seven. Seven. Oh, and seven, I should say. <laughs> Welcome to the agency. Yeah, none of, none of that today. I guess that's the one thing we haven't seen. Who knows? You never know what could happen here. Either way, St. Clair, one round away from closing this out. Hopefully, not going to let any kind of comeback happen out of Davenport. Similar to what they almost had happen in the hard point. Slow playing towards this A site once again. No one giving up anything. Davenport playing it oh so slow. Not wanting to give up a first blood. I mean, you have to act in a good position, but he's going to opt to back down, get back through closed. And now they're trying to figure out what angle they want to take defensively to try to get towards the site. Rax is going to lay down, play the pixel peek under the doorway. Priestly trying to get a bit aggressive. Bendy spotted one over towards P1. He'll back all the way off. Doesn't want to give himself a way to get go. You just hear those pre-fire shots all the way through the double doors on the opposite side of the map. They want to get themselves some opportunity to move up on A. Uh, they just don't know how far pressed up Davenport is going to be. Exit up top. Blaze is going to be able to win the one-on-one. -on -one. This Priestley tacks on another here in the round. St. Clair, a 4-2 advantage. Sheldon trying to push all the way back. 45 seconds to work with here. Link potentially coming in. Priestley's just going to get him through the doorway. Gecko with 10 HP. And guess who's on the chase? It's Blaze. Going to go. Oh, please finish him. Please finish him. Yes! Oh! Pick him in the knee. Put him down. I can pick down. St. Clair will take the search and destroy. Shoot some bodies as well. The team that was up 2-0 yesterday. Now down 0-2. St. Clair. Whew. I haven't seen this version of him in a while. Looks like they got their swag back, like you said earlier. <sighs> Done. Peace, man. No better way to get our first uh, first six dog reference in for the day than in a way to close out a search like that. That is an exclamation point on a search and destroy that St. Clair were dominated the entirety of it. We'll swap back to St. Edwards, New Mexico State, as they find themselves in the search and destroy. New Mexico State, though, up five to three. Match point here on the embassy yet it is the side of st edwards who have themselves the advantage here inside of the best of five series 1-0 lead for themselves oh here in the snd we've kind of talked about it it's like yeah you know this is probably their worst mode i see jolteon's got two cruise missiles i think that's two kills of six 
No, two out of six. Okay, I was going to say. Cruise missiles, that'd be kind of nuts. Regardless, I'll feed on my 10 and 6 and uh, Thresh at 12 and 4. There's just one eyesore here, and I, I say one in a very precarious way. You only got one kill. Uh, two red sticks. Oh, jeez. Electric. He's been flying around the whole series, though, but Vanity in reality. Hey! Upgraded from Olive Garden to, uh, well, take a next tie and upgrade after that. For me, there's not one, I guess. Either way, a 1v2, when things are all said and done, Electric was doing the round, maybe trying to go for the ace. Vanity, to try to stay alive here in the search, has to pull it off. Timing? Ooh. He's crushing yes. the side, no way. Oh, oh you missed no that timing? Jolteon trying to snake the Hegwitz will walk away within the tack. Wins the gunfight up close. New Mexico State tied up here in the search and destroy. 1-1 one, one in the series. St. Edwards has been good in their respawns. But New Mexico, excuse me, New Mexico State punches up when they need to. St. Edwards is worse mode. High series up 1-1. One, one. It was a 10-point hard point victory for the Hilltoppers. Lackluster S&D performance from a couple players. And again, if that's in any way more even on the other side, which it is. Yeah, I'm not too shocked with that scoreline. Just slower performances, yeah. uh, your teammates' inability to keep up. It happens. It, it costs you the map, though. So now we're tied up 1-1 in that series. St. Clair up 2-0 in theirs. And these are both losers' finals matchup. Winner goes on to play, uh, you know, winner side of the bracket in their respective regions. Of course, St. Clair, our focus match here in Davenport. Winner goes on to play Northwood. I mean, what a trifecta of teams left. You know, you're not really shocked out of Northwood, of course, coming from the winner side of things. And for St. Clair and Davenport, question for you if st Clair takes in the 3-0 have you seen enough of them have you seen enough from them today to even say they can hold a candle to northwood well, yeah, see the thing is is right they can take a map or two off of northwood we've seen we've seen this roster do it beforehand the yeah. problem is is that they'd have to beat them in two best of five series if they want to be able to take them down and qualify for land so do i have faith in them to win a map or two sure do I have faith in them winning two best of five series against the best team in collegiate Call of Duty? Absolutely not. That's yeah. no knock on St. Clair. That's no knock on any team. Northwood's just that good. Call me a Glazer. I don't care. Like, <laughs> that's just as simple as it gets. No, oh, no, it's true. I mean, the entire season you have, but we all have gassed up Northwood, but you either are also the first person to say that, but also the first person to eat your words if proven wrong. And uh, again, we just haven't seen the opposite side of things. Don't know that we will. With how well they're playing. I mean, you take the number one seeds respectively coming out of each region, and I, I think Northwood's still playing an arm and a leg above the competition, but things get down to the wire. A little more on the line. Right now, these teams are playing for a guaranteed spot at LAN if they aren't able to win it in the grand finals. Whoever does, or excuse me, whoever doesn't, will be playing at least in the LAN qualifier this upcoming weekend. So you've really done the hard work you needed to by winning your losers round six matchup if you did come from the lower bracket. Now you're just trying to play for that lock spot. But Mexico State going toe-to-toe -to -toe with St. Edwards here. Had the series up 1-1. St. Clair and Davenport doing their dance on the other side of things with them being up 2-0. The Saints over the Panthers. <sighs> what a day. I mean, what a day. Caught it to bed, honestly. That's, that's about all I can say at this point. It's just been an electric been a, good day. Uh, a day between all these teams. Oh, it's been a great day, Akkad. Uh, yesterday was also a lot of fun to watch as well. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I think, you know, 12 and 5 there is cool. Awesome. Thresh had a great game. All for not. Unfortunate. Sorry, bud. Uh, but 4 and 16 between two players. I don't want to say it's inexcusable, but it's kind of inexcusable. Um, at this, at this point. Season? Yeah. Yeah. At this point in the tournament, this stage of the season, like, it, you, you can't have two different players falling off a cliff that hard. Um, and it was funny because, like, you were like, yeah, they went toe to toe, but like, did they really, though, with <laughs> two people dropping four between the two of them? Like, probably not. No. Um, but just looking back at the, uh, the SD highlights here from the St. Clair Davenport match. I mean, it looked really good from Davenport in the first two, or first two rounds. I'm sitting there, I'm like, okay, Davenport's kind of rolling here. They're getting good first bloods. St. Clair's really not able to find their way around the map. And then after the first two rounds went, St. Clair were like, why are we letting these guys play us with the aggression that we normally play them with or play other teams with? They're like, yeah, let's pull our heads out of our, you know, wares and tee up for the one time. And that's exactly what they did. We'll see those body shots once again, sponsored by the Jack. I mean, at, the, at this stage in the playoffs, if you let a team, it's, it's again, with, with the caliber of teams that are left, you could almost cut and paste this statement to, to where the situation applies. You let a team at this stage rip off five straight search rounds, 
I don't expect you to win the search. Uh, plain and simple. I mean, yeah. again, you can you can sub in any two teams on either side of that conversation. We've seen it today. You let a team. I mean, we were talking about St. Edwards earlier, right? You let a team rip off 90 or so points. Yeah, you're probably not going to win that hard point, or teams are going to punish you from this point forward. Uh, again, St. Clair in a position to punish them for letting them give up five rounds in, in the fortress. They're now three and zero in fortress on the day. And then they'll go to an Asilo control where, I mean, for the Saints, your confidence has to be at an all-time high, uh, given that the series yep. is going the complete counterpart to what it did just a day ago. Davenport, you're trying not to reel, you're trying not to be checked, but you're going to have to make a stand here. And um, again, you have a couple different angles. You could talk about how that starts, especially going back to a respawn. But when St. Clair's finding kills like that, Bendy having S&Ds like this, it is um, no fun task or no fun feat to try to overcome. Talk of the town right now, is St. Clair going to blow another 0-2 lead? That is the fun question that we've all been wondering throughout the entire day. They played Expo twice already today. They were able to win it once the second time they were up 2-0, and then SIUE was able to come back and win that 3-2 uh, to give them a chance to kind of force the series going forward. Uh, but unfortunately, they weren't able to do that, and St. Clair was able to force things out in a game five. Two matches we've got here instead of the lower finals, one at a 1-1 standstill. This one between St. Clair and Davenport, a 2-0 lead where the Saints are trying to go ahead and force their Griff Dip into map three to sweep the Davenport Panthers and get that oh-so-tasty revenge on them we're gonna go ahead and take a break when we come back this match will continue and we'll get to see the remainder of the st edwards matchup against the side of new mexico state so don't go too far away from your setups back here for college cop playoffs in a second Map number three, St. Clair trying to close things out in a 3-0 sweep over the Panthers. They've done a wonderful job throughout the maps one and two to be able to put themselves in a nice position to take not only full control of this series, but put themselves in the driver's seat for a Dayton Destiny with a grand finals rematch against the Northwood roster. Bendy looking in the back line up the staircase, not able to find one yet, has dead silence pop in the back line, finds Sheldon. Blaze is able to find one as well. This offensive push now starting to make its way forward onto the A zone. Clock will stop out at 22 seconds. Five lives taken off of either side Thrax with the decision to make I'm gonna try to pick a couple players off from tower but again you sit up there too long where your teammates get picked around you and you try to find the time to jump down to become effective but uh well Bendy will make that decision for you he'll go up hunting for the kill end up taking the power position for himself and well make this a push that much easier for his team second take of progress comes in two life advantage favoring the saints as now they're looking to try to add another 60 seconds onto the clock last tick maybe a contestant here for a moment as soon as Thrax touches the point, he'll make quick waste back over all the way to the respawn block as Davenport will once again try to hold the B zone here on the defensive hit. St. Clair, two players inside of their spawn side, two players inside of the middle of the building. Gecko just trying to play for one. We find one off guard. Held in good head glitch is going to be good. And while three lives go the way of the Davenport Panthers, St. Clair going to be forced back to the respawn yet again. And if control's not the same thing today. It really does only take one push uh, in case you needed that reminder. So, so the clock probably going to be a factor quicker than the lives. St. Clair will need a quick forward down here to be able to make things work. They're able to find three. So now you're going to see the green arrow go ahead. Spawn still will be closed for the Panthers as they try to get semblance, find shape back towards this B site. The clock will be stopped for the moment. Players trying to get back in position. First take of progress on its way to being earned for St. Clair. Sheldon shots left side relays finds it still players on the point 37 seconds is where the clock is stalled out at 16 to 12 four left advantage for the offense that's now starting to push their way forward Drax checked out with a stun check but won't be able to find one not make it two blaze falls up and towards the top bendy the last victim here for Thrax and with 27 seconds left there's about one more good team push here from St. Clair and that first take didn't come in I'm almost certain so for St. Clair don't even have to take a progress to go for it but no one for New Mexico draining it. Maybe not worried that the first tick didn't come in. Either way, last push coming in. Pretty sleep through the back lines. You're trying to be aware of it, but here come a couple of kills. Sheldon closes door. Tries to get back over towards the B zone. Still a bunch of players here from there the St. Clair Saints. Trying to swarm back over on the zone. Two seconds left. Exit in the back line. Forced to back off. 12 to 9 in the lives. Good shots in, but still across the map. Here come the spawn. Rax able to find one. Shots up the blaze. Not going to be good enough. And it's still two players here from St. Clair. Trying to stack the zone. Trying to go ahead and complete the final tick that they need to win the first round here on this control. And as a team kill comes in and finds another one as well, St. Clair. Do a wonderful job of playing the timer all the way down to the end of both A and B. And get both sides secured for it. Uh, again, offensively, St. Clair getting off to great starts and, and their controls. Closing it out where they've had the issues. 
But once again, off on a good foot here. Defensively, we'll see what kind of st stop they can make. At least as far as controlling the ticks of progress as well. You find all of yours in your round. Anything less you can hold your opposition to. Going to build well for your next attempt offensively. And everyone, out the decent slang to start. Lay 7-7, seven and seven, relay 7-3, and, and Priestley 6-4. and four. Starting to tee things up here to potentially close the series out. Max looks over towards the radio side, doesn't find anything just yet. Relays hasn't made his way forward. Nay gonna be out. This has allowed Thrax just to sprint straight up the map. Relays should be the first gunfight here for Thrax. Doesn't realize that he has somebody around the corner. Four kills go the way of St. Clair and all the way back to the respawn block already are the Davenport Panthers. Bendy going to be looking for Gecko. First gunfight challenge goes his way. Priestley's there for help, though. Shaky shots from Bendy are going to be good enough, at least to clean things up for St. Clair. And now they have them completely oh. trapped in their backside of spawn. This is dangerous here for Davenport. They need to clear somebody out soon. And even if you get the clearance, right, it's still, you need to do damage control on lives. You want to try to clear them out as quickly as possible, but everyone for St. Clair starting to tee up here. Bendy over the top trying to find a kill, but a couple will line them up and knock them down. Still no clean opening just yet. The Avonport Panthers grouping together here trying to find any kind of place that they can at least look to work through. Maybe their bottom pool is going to be a start, but there's less than 30 seconds left. You're already down seven or so lives. Back to the respawn block you go, and uh, whew. Maybe looking like a GG go next. This has been a phenomenal round from St. Clair. Their defense here on Elisilo prevailing as they always do. Six in a row here from Priestley. Cruise missile to work with. Yeah, I mean, he's just been taking the exact same route every single time through the back line of Davenport and has paid wonders. He's on seven in a row. Sure, they've gotten over towards the A zone and they might be able to get a tick of progress or two on it as they continue to win these gunfights in preseason from behind Thrax. I thought if he wins that gunfight, the round's probably over. Absolutely so. Two takes progress in. St. Clair trying to class back over to this. They don't want to give it up for free, but they're running out of moments to try to collapse to try to get the contest in. Progress going to be earned. Kills still going the way of the Panthers. And they're able to keep the life somewhat manageable after that spree as well. Just a three life differential on transition with 60 seconds on the clock. So sitting in a decent position, they're going to give up this first push, at least to start. We've got Thrax watching in the cross, but off the respawn block. We're going to try to group up, try to find another opening once again. We're St. Clair, I've already given you one. If, if Gecko was there a half second earlier out of that window, he probably at least walks away with one. That gives Davenport all the full clear to say, hey, let's just sprint onto the beat. Stop the clock. Maybe find ourselves a few more lives in the process. Right now, you're basically fighting a war on two fronts. You got the life count to worry about and the timer. If you're Davenport, you got players pushed up onto beat. You'll stop it for a moment. You'll force St. Clair out of their holes as they realize that somebody's on the zone. Gecko trying to make his way outside of the door here. Keldon's able to find Bendy. Really to no avail just yet. Still tons of St. Clair players around this zone. But as another two fall, you're looking for Blaze, who's on the flank. Thrax might get some good timing here inside of Kegs. We'll force him to back all the way off. First tick of progress on the B zone has gone through. Relays on the staircase is forced to back off for a moment. Thrax good shots. Wall bangs are going to be in. Three to one trade. And now it's up to Priestley, who invests the streak in the round as well. Might be able to find some good timing there. Thrax gets cut down. And this is going to allow St. Clair at least a little bit of time to get all the way back over as Bendy's still on the flank. And there's just one player on the time stopping it, but they had to hop off, and now you're letting St. Clair get back in position. St. Clair putting em emphasis on cutting off the reinforcements, isolating Another the players one? that are left. Gecko has to get in position. He has to fly towards us and get this, but St. Clair, they're going to be ready for it. Ooh. I know St. Clair won a 2-0 advantage, but I don't know if I love double investments of streaks there, but as the Semtex comes in over the top, Sheldon still here on the zone. Second ticket progress is in. Everybody here from Davenport now back over towards the zone. They're just trying no. to stack it. Maybe one player in from behind. Priestley, can you do the damage? No! You invest two streaks in the round and still allow Davenport to capture the zone. Oh, man. And uh, viewers at home, you want a quick 101 on what not to do? Invest two streaks and lose a round is a uh, really good place to start. Um, and that's just props to Davenport for being in positions to continue their part pressure. I thought the Saints were in a good position to cut off reinforcements, slow down the push, getting back to the site. They still found ways to stay alive, find kills on the opposite end of things. You bait out two streaks, you walk away with a round win. You said at the start, this has been a perfect defensive round out of St. Clair. I mean, again, their problem, whether it's in a round specifically, whether it's in a map specifically, or a series. When St. Clair gives teams openings, they have been punished for it today. And, and, and crazy ways still get the series wins, of course, but man, they do not make it easy on themselves. Seriously, good snap around the corner. We'll hop onto this A zone. Starting to make that progress known here is St. Clair. They've got two players stacked on it. Everybody's starting to huddle around the save zone as well. I mean, if I'm Davenport here, you got one kill, maybe make one good attempt at this. I, I don't know if I'd throw multiple at it.
And as the Semtex goes up in towards the top window, Thrax marks his way forward. The A zone completed. 208 to work with here for the rest of the round now. They clear have the advantage in terms of lives. Exit in from behind is able to snap to the second relays falls. Good kills evens things out just a bit easier. So, so much time to work with. Both teams making do, even with the time going down to the wires. So this one is not over until the timer hits zero or the lives hit zero, whatever comes first. Saints trying to figure out what side of the map they want to push this through. First starts of clearing out the base. And now that that's done, they're going to march forward. All playing in and around Warehouse. Maybe Bindi getting around the outside with the AR. Going to try to cut down Thrax on Hill and tries to snap for the second. I thought for a moment had that. His teammates to clean up the kills around it and get the trade. So three for one in the feed. They have the ability to sack here. And really, Gecko, the only player left who can make something happen. They got close spawns too. Bendy's already back over towards the point as he came off the respawn block. And now as Gecko starts to march in, Relays makes a great play to turn all the way back around. First stick of progress is good. Halfway through the second as Priestley's able to find and tack on another. Sheldon, Thrax, both dead. St. Clair, second stick of progress. Stack still in and nobody's going to be close to even touch this one. St. Clair are going to get themselves another round here on offense to take a 2-1 advantage. Put themselves not only at match point here in the control, but series point as well. And the rounds that St. Clair have been winning have been far more dominant than the ones Davenport walk away with. And, and, and that is what's important to note here in the control at this stage of it because you've been fighting tooth and nail for Davenport offensively. It has been clinical for him. Sure, the first round went down to the wire. This one, they write those wrongs and make it a bit more decisive on their end of things. Like you said, series point for St. Clair. Close this one out here. It has themselves a date with Northwood in the grand finals for a guaranteed spot at the land tournament here for the college cod league <sighs> and boy do they want to do that again talking about get that last laugh against davenport here at least for now recently set up on a head glitch sheldon and thrax going to be up to challenge here in just a moment inside of the building though and off screen it is going to be blaze who finds one on exit Thrax and gecko though still trying to make work around the map and as relays backs all the way off still no presence on the a or the b zones 30 seconds has gone by without any sort of stoppage on the clock from the Davenport side of things here on their offensive attempt. Players swarming the middle map in the building. Nothing in terms of map presence has really been felt. It's going to be an A hit here. Blaze, good shots on the Gecko with a Vaz Nevin hand. Relays will force Thrax to back all the way off. Semtex forces him to sprint straight forward. And as he's able to clean that up, Davenport still remains on top of the lives, 26 to 25. Trying to hit this first trick of progress in over the A site. Priestley here for the contestant. Thrax is just... Okay. Yeah, no. You weren't getting shot on the side for five seconds or anything. No worries. Priestley able to find a couple now. The team push can begin and commence on the site. Three for one in the feed. Gecko going to be the last one standing here. Maybe top patio trying to find some kills to the back, but nothing going for you. Once again, the clock starting to work against you. 35 seconds left. Sure, lives are manageable, but map position, not so much. Priestley, ooh, ooh, I thought with that kill, he was going to start running the same kind of route he did earlier. Eat up the lives of Davenport. Back on the A side again. Take and have a progress. Davenport need to close it out here. The opening hard point, Priestley didn't look all that great, but his team still was able to pull out the win here inside of the control. At 26 and 12, he has been all but flawless. Exit tries for a challenge. Two kills go the way of Davenport, so they'll add an extra minute onto the clock here as they capture the entirety of A. They've got a three life advantage, and again, as we've seen time and time again here, with the offensive pushes over towards B, all it takes is one good clean kill feed of two to three kills force everybody back to the respawn block and make sure you stay with numbers on the b zone trade back and forth we'll have a 3v3 on the site now make it a two versus two lives still remain the same as they were just moments ago as blaze is able to find one throughout the middle of the map davenport is once again forced to back off to their spawn and spend a couple of seconds here trying to formulate a push blaze tries to snap but exit gonna get the better timing on that Again, spending time clearing out the base, like you said, trying to find an angle that they want to approach. Another team kill coming in for Davenport. Priestley going to line up a couple, maybe through the back. Doesn't get the timing on Gecko to find the kill, but uh, again, damage has been done. If he gets to wreak havoc in your base, chew up more of this clock, it is going to be a problem for Davenport now as they're trying to find these kills on the opposite side of the map. He's got Dead Silence popped. He's made his way all the way back, back around. And player number eight next him. Started to march his way forward. Thrax in the field gets shot down. Sheldon inside of the point. Priestley still on the back line. 30 kills for him. Now make it 31. Can't escape Gecko's wrath. But he's done just enough. 11 to 9. Davenport up in the live still. 30 seconds left here in the round. And Gecko's now popped a dead silence of his own to start marching his way through the top of the map. See if he can replicate this kind of damage on the opposition. Already has been seen. though was the problem. Call's going to be in his party. Belazo connect with a grenade for the kill. And Priestley continuing to do ungodly things. To the Davenport Panther squad. Trades. Just a few kills away from closing it out. Good trades come in though, and you stop the clock for now. 
We're on the point, but who's in from behind? It's Bendy once again. He's found two kills with the help of relays. Now Davenport forced to get off the respawn. They've got the clock stalled out here if they want it. They have a player up on the zone, and that's going to be Gecko. But with four seconds left, he'll still coming in from St. Clair. He's got good shots on the blaze, but the spawns, the trades are there for St. Clair. They knock out the team that forced them down to the lower bracket. And I know those body shots are even more heartwarming to St. Clair than they were in the search and destroy. Davenport Panthers, they are out of contention here in the playoffs, the regional aspect of the College Cod season. circle this on your calendar if we get another matchup whether it be in the land qualifier whether it be on land depending on if these teams qualify this one continuing to build storylines as the season goes on even this late in the season going to be exciting to see if they match up i i, I i'm hoping praying for a matchup this weekend against yes. those two teams in the qualifier um yes. of course the st Clair <laughs> locks their spot then they would not have to play through the, the last lcq but yep. they don't I'm going to be uh, definitely feral for another one of those matchups. Uh, whew, good, good stuff there. Three O's on either side of things. Back to back days. Results favoring other teams, but St. Clair get the edge here when it matters most. And now they'll have a date with Northwood in the grand finals. Try to lock their spot for LAN. It was just, I mean, it was clean from start to finish. Priestley had a slower map one and two. Really tees up on map three and drops another near 40 bomb as he's done several times this season on control. And again, that's only through four rounds. So clinical work out of the Saints. It hasn't been squeaky clean all day, but they've been winning nonetheless, and now have themselves their coveted matchup with the uh, oh, well, Northwood. St. Clair, we asked them to ice up against teams that they need to be able to beat to move forward. They were able to do it, but skin their teeth inside of that game five against this IUE. Here against Davenport, though, I know their revenge is oh so sweet. A little salt in the wounds, but a little sugar in their mouths. As they've now tasted the victory against this Davenport roster that's been able to best them a few times already this season of Collegiate Cod. And as things come to a head, St. Clair get back against Northwood. So there, there's, there's, not a, there's not a lot of teams that I think can take a map or two off of this Northwood roster. And maybe St. Clair won't. But if there's any team that I think has the capability of, to do it, and I've been saying it since the beginning of this year, and I know you have too, Cash. This St. Clair roster has come into this Modern Warfare 2 season feeling very confident. They've got a swagger about them. They are a team that can continuously move the needle forward and kind of favor themselves just a bit in some of their matches. They get that ball rolling. Everybody's firing on the same cylinder. And I'll tell you, mm -hmm. this team gets scary. Uh, they absolutely do. And again, as, as much as we shape up Northwood to be this big, untouchable, uh, daunting giant, as much as they are, <laughs> for St. Clair, I mean, they know that, right, this isn't the first time they've played them, and it's just, you take it one map at a time. Don't think about yep. the fact that you have a potential, you might you might play 10 maps, potentially, in a bracket reset. One map at a time, see where that gets you. And, and again, if you if you keep things immediate, keep things in front of you, I think the series, whether it be one or two brackets, looks a bit more manageable. Uh, again, I'm confident in St. Clair's ability to, if anyone has the ability to push north with a distance. Yeah, we were we, we shaped this up at the beginning of the year to be a grand finals matchup. Here we're seeing it in yeah. the grand finals of playoffs. But it's one that, uh, again, we had kind of written the storylines for the entire time. St. Clair get a chance to prove themselves in a weekend where they are perhaps hitting an all-time high in confidence as of the last few weeks, right? The, the, the faltering wasn't the whole year, just last couple weeks. And with the way yeah. they closed out today... Uh, definitely one where they're feeling good going into this Northwood matchup. You would have to assume about as good as it could be. And, and for Davenport, you want another crack at this. You don't want this to be the closing points of your story with St. Clair. But uh, yeah. it's just, again, we'll also get to see how the St. Edwards New Mexico State match ended. But it has been a tremendous day of Call of Duty. And I, I know when we hop off the broadcast, I'll be eager to see how this Northwood one finishes too. I know many people were wanting to see this matchup, myself included. 99 to 27, St. Edwards were able to win the control in a three to one fashion to put them up 2 one inside of the series. The response have gone their way so far. Looking to go ahead and close the chapter on another aspect of the regional playoffs is the St. Edwards Hilltoppers as the Aggies are really just not having a great time here on Fortress. Been putting the blender word to Bendy. Vanity looks to snap over towards Electric, but good shots around the corner. And a little surprise kill is going to be good. Inside of Bottom Art, now 50 seconds of time for New Mexico State to go ahead and get themselves here. They want to get the lion's share of time and get at least some sort of semblance of control back in their favor. Vanity Eons getting off to a hot start here, but the rest of the team close in tow. A little bit slower for the Aggies. Trying to battle back on P4, like you were saying, and a good one for them to try to do that. Close out this rotation strong and really be focused up going into the next set of rotations. Sandin was on the outside looking in. Going to try to collapse. 
at least keep New Mexico State off this time for now as Vanity will get down and look try to earn some more points for his team. Ready for the gunfights at the front, able to take it as Rush finds another and St. Edwards, I just you know, so many so many ways you can uh, you can cut the situation up. It feels like you can say the same thing about them and St. Clair. When they are a confident team, when they are winning gunfights that they should and both shouldn't, that's when you should fear them most because the respawns get absolutely lethal between these teams. Good hold there from New Mexico State, though. Gets them back into the game just a bit. Still St. Edwards with a marginal lead. As Eon's inside of P5 has set himself up, looks over towards the left. Free shot. Shots are going to be there. And as Jolteon hops in and around the corner, Jose is going to be looking for himself a kill. Phenom there. Well played Semtex. Gets himself a little help over the top with attack in hand. As quickly as St. Edwards were there for the initial time here on P5. New Mexico State did a nice job of breaking it. Absolutely so. Got good angles locked down. They're watching every push out of P3, so you're really stuck here if you are St. Edward. Some, well, big kills are going to need to come in for you to try to break out of this spawn trap, and maybe it's going to be behind Vanity getting across. Eons out of bottom maps as well. The quick break comes back in. Ten stripe kill feed goes back and forth. No one on time for now. Reality around the corner, ready to take this challenge. Is he going to be able to win it? Answer will be yes. So, so weakened up, but looking to run up the scoreline. Still doubled up on that of New Mexico State as we like to go towards P1 here in about 10 seconds. Scrap time up for grabs. Should go the way of New Mexico State. And they're also out early, at least with numbers towards P1. It seems like the slang is also starting to turn a bit in the way of New Mexico State as well. Uh, they're just getting themselves a good formation around the map. They've got themselves some solid footing and have really allowed themselves to not only get back into this game, but just kind of play it at a, at a little bit slower of a pace uh, that forces the gunfights to come to them opposed to just trying mm -hmm. to sprint at St. Edward. So Hilltoppers now feeling the wrath of these Aggies. It was about a 112 point lead for the Hilltoppers has now diminished just a bit. Still a sizable lead for themselves though, so it's not panic mode just yet. But as New Mexico State will try to get back across the map, Eons will go ahead and pair himself for two. Reality there is Eons, who has been on an absolute tear all day today, leading the lobby at 23. Electric and Phenom are the two players. I'm looking to see if they can kind of jolt this team back into this one. Those are the ones that can really uh, start to set the bar high as far as slaying is concerned out to well over 30 engagements apiece, trying to get their teammates on board. But again, majority of that time still going to go the way of St. Edward's. And they have this rotation with this kill coming through in the back out of Eons. That should lock down P2 for them. And sure, you mounted a little bit of a comeback, but you're still not even at 100 points. And again, we talk about it so often at this stage of the season, you can't let teams get out of this lead and not expect to have to play, well, perfect hard point to, to try to battle things back. And against the St. Edward squad, I oh. don't know that they're going to let any of those openings come back. 27 kills here from Eons now make it 28, five in a row. Cruise missile, just one kill away. And St. Edwards, they've got themselves full control over by P2. Eons has spotted a couple on the cross throughout the middle of the map. Doesn't want to get cut down over from the right side. We'll get some great timing on Electrix as he was trying to hop in towards top two yes. windows, getting back over to the opposite side. And guess what? St. Edwards, they do a wonderful job of not only holding down the scraps here, but they're playing for the rotations as well. They know they have this one in the bag. They're in the driver's seat. They've lost a few games, or at least they lost a few leads in some games that they were able to close out. But this one is seemingly just a bit too far out of the margin. The cards are not in the Aggies' favor right now. New Mexico State, it's got to be one solid break here. At least they got a kill to go their way. But guess who's there? It's Eons on a trade. I mean, you have Eons and Thresh both with cruise missiles as well. So even if you get in, if you're the Aggies, you have to survive an onslaught of kill streaks that'll rain in over the top. And look, you can't even survive the onslaught of bullets coming your way from the St. Edwards players. It has been perfection from them from start to finish, though we're closing in on the finish and it's not quite over yet. Just 20 seconds needed. <laughs> and there couldn't be an easier hill for you to do it. They'll invest the streaks anyway. Maybe it's a fireworks show for us here. They get to watch either way. They're into the back. Just 10 seconds needed for St. Edwards to close it out. And well, they're happy to pick and choose time from here. Eon's got nine in a row. Five seconds oh. left here for the side of St. Edwards. Trophy system down. Nobody for a touch. They'll knock New Mexico State Aggies out of contention here inside of the regional playoffs. They'll have a Dayton Destiny back in the grand finals. The Hilltoppers are frying here in the lower bracket. This team genuinely has a shot to make it to land here today. Really, really do. In their respective region. Everything's starting to click for him here when they want it to most. I, I thresh the tear he goes on at the end of things. I, I mean, he wasn't having the best of games. He was just over positive. Goes on a couple six frees to close it out. Eons, of course, doing his thing. Yeah. And again, when the rest <laughs> of the team is playing with that level of confidence, you can you can just tell, right, when the momentum shifts and a team is just challenging. It's plain and simple. You're jumping out of different windows. You're doing everything that you can. Taking and winning gunfights that you probably shouldn't in any other situation. But, I mean, again, when you've got flow like that, absolutely send the taking it to New Mexico State to close it out here. 
I mean, a, a great job from them to correct mistakes that we've seen earlier. Like you said, they, they blew leads in series earlier here. They don't do that. They close this one out in a 3-1 fashion. And again, have a date in grand finals where they absolutely could lock themselves a uh, in a position for land today. To the highlights of the map here once again. The few moments that we missed early on. It's not like we missed all that much. It was St. Edwards. We're able to take the mantle early on inside of this game, and really, they never lost control. New Mexico State had a few moments where they got maybe a full 60, uh, got a good amount of hill time to go their way, but uh, realistically, after St. Edwards was able to get out to that large advantage that they had for themselves, it just really wasn't much of a contest late inside of this game. The Aggies, they had themselves a good run. They got themselves to the winner's finals earlier on. They lost to Oklahoma Christian, got sent down to the lower finals. St. Edwards, though, I mean, they have just been playing so well throughout the entirety of today that really nothing it mattered. <laughs> when no, they mean, got to them. I mean, some of these maps were close. They were cool. Um, but, but this is a Hilltopper roster that, genuinely speaking, um, I, I don't know if I want to say has a chip on their shoulder, but definitely has been counted out in a lot of ways especially after they lost 0-3 to Oklahoma Christian in the winner's bracket. Um, they have a lot to prove going forward, and, and I think this is just another one of those things that uh, kind of shows their worth and is a show-you moment to not just themselves, but the people that are watching and uh, the people that just don't think that they might be able to make it into a land environment today or even fight for a national championship. Absolutely. I mean, I, I mean there's nothing wrong with the score, but I'm looking at for seeing Edwards. Everyone goes positive. Three of your four players with, I mean, everyone's about the same amount of hill time. And the one player who doesn't have the same amount of hill time, well, he's dropping 30 bombs <laughs> in <laughs> yeah. a very uh, open and closed hard point. So, uh, again, like you said, they're playing with something to prove that's adding to the little call it a light chip on their shoulder. But, I, I mean, again, they're going to square up against the Noble Oklahoma Christian squad that, yeah, they, you want revenge. Uh, again, all of these teams, even New Mexico State, again, everyone that's lost in this, uh, since these last couple, uh, this last round, right, they're already locked for the quals. At least an opportunity to fight for it but now you can yep. tell these teams that have punched their tickets into this grand finals once again think of the teams you follow right saint edwards and saint Clair, respectively the way they're playing going into these grand final matches is as good as you would want to be playing going into a matchup against what is the best teams in the scene right now absolutely you can see from the very beginning all the way down to where the fortress hard point ended us things started very close they got a little further apart and then they just Kind of got blown out of proportion towards the end. The Hilltoppers were rolling. St. Edwards finds themselves back in control of their destiny yet again. But they've got a date in the grand finals with Oklahoma Christian to try and get themselves secured on land without having to play the land qualifier next weekend for the remaining teams here inside of the College Cod postseason. Regardless of how things have gone today, though, it has been a fun day of Call of Duty. Um, and, and Cash, let me get your closing thoughts here before we send it over to the Brit and the Man Bun. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so, so excited for, you know, the land qualifiers coming up. I'm excited to see how this night closes. Uh, again, upset still on the cards in a lot of these grand finals matches. So don't count these teams out, not only the ones we've seen, but the ones we haven't uh, to see how the night closes. So definitely stick around for that. But I mean, again, this is playoff COD. This is what we live for. If, if it's not a great finish today, of course, land qualifiers are going to find a way to blow things out of proportion um, from what we've seen this weekend. And again, land from there will continue <clears throat> to con push the ceiling higher and higher. So COD's only getting better for the remainder of the season for CCL. And uh, yeah, of course, I'm excited to be on the desk with you, as always, to, to bring some good action. It's uh, It's been fun. It's been a good year of college COD for us as well, but that's going to uh, pretty much do it for us. Uh, you know, St. Clair, they'll be moving on to play Northwood inside of the Grand Finals. They'll have to win two best of fives if they want to make it to land today. Northwood just need one, obviously, coming from the winner's side of things. Uh, and then on the opposite side, St. Edwards taking on Oklahoma Christian in that Grand Final matchup. So it'll be a fun rest of the night of Call of Duty. That being said, for myself and Cash, that's the end of the road here today. We'll send you over to Infinity in proper casts for the rest of the night they'll take you through the grand finals and they'll tell you who will be going on to land the college cod playoffs see ya in a bit